Hello, I'm Sunny Williams. I'm up here on the International Space Station. So this is Node 2. This is a really cool module. Um, of course, most of these modules, you'll see they have four sides, uh, and they're put together. That way we could sort of walk, work on a flat plane, either a wall, a floor, another wall, or the ceiling. But, you know, again, all you have to do is turn yourself and your reference changes. The reason I'm bringing that up is because this is where four out of six of us sleep. And so people always ask about sleeping in space. Do you lie down? Are you in a bed? Um, not really, because it doesn't matter. You don't really have the sensation of lying down. You just sit in your sleeping bag. So here's one sleep station right here. I'm going in right now. You can follow me if you want. So I'm inside. It's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag right here that we sleep in, so we don't have a, sort of like a little bit of a cover. We don't fly all over the place. Um, but you know, you can sleep in any orientation. I have it sleeping, feeling like I'm standing up right now, but like you saw, I'm on the floor, but it doesn't matter if I turn over and I sleep upside down. I can't have it, I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm upside down, so it really doesn't matter. The sleep station is also like a little office. We've got a computer in here. As you can see, we've got a couple little toys. I've got some books, I've got some clothes, and other things that make it sort of like home. I'm coming out. And just for reference, that's one sleep station. This one's another right here. There's one on the ceiling, if you want to call it, right here. And then there's a fourth on the other wall over here. So all of us sleep in a little bit of a, a circle. All right, come on back. There's more to show you. I know that there's some questions about how to use the bathroom and how do you actually live in space like normal, like at home. I mentioned real quickly about getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and washing your face. Well, how do you do that? Well, here is the bathroom, essentially. You get up in the morning and we have a little kit and it has all the essential things that you need, like your toothbrush and toothpaste and brush. See how See how much better the brush makes my hair look? <laughs> I'm just joking. It still stands up straight. It doesn't matter where you are. It's always going to stand up straight while you're up in space. A lot of people ask about toothbrush and toothpaste. So luckily enough, toothpaste, you can do it upside right this way, is sticky. And so it sticks to your toothbrush, no problem. Another cool thing is that water sticks to your toothbrush too. If you can see it, I'll have some water come out. The water is pretty neat up in space. It'll stick to your toothbrush and it will make whoop, a big bubble. And that's just by surface tension. And then you can drink it. So a lot of people ask about what do you do with the toothpaste after you brush your teeth. Two options. Swallow it, and it's sort of like mouthwash, but it tastes a little gross. Or you can just spit it out in a paper towel, and then you don't have to worry about it. Swallowing thing I wouldn't recommend at home. I'm only up here for four months, so it's not that bad. <laughs> One of the most pressing questions about using being living in space, of course, is the bathroom. So let's take a look at that little piece of work. Come on in. Here we are at the throne. This is awesome. You might see the little um, 
You might have noticed the little moon on the outside. This is our orbital outhouse right here. And of course, it serves for two functions. Number two, right here, I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim and you'll be, be ready to make sure things get let go the right direction. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's of course for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. I might add it's color coded so you really don't get it mixed up, which is nice. This is yellows for number one. <laughs> and uh, also there's a selection of paper. People always ask about toilet paper. What do you do with toilet paper? What kind of toilet paper do you have? We have gloves just because sometimes it does get messy. We have some Russian wipes, which are a little bit coarse if you like the coarse type of toilet paper. We have some nice tissues, which are nice and soft if you like soft toilet paper. We have huggies, um, just for any cleanup. You know, we were all babies once and this sort of helps. And then if things get really out of control, we have uh, disinfectant wipes just to make sure we clean up here. Because you know, just like the water I showed you, the number one stuff can sort of go all over the place if you don't aim correctly. And did I mention, both of these have a little bit of suction, so they should keep things going in the right direction. But, um, like I said, sometimes things get a little out of control if you are out of control yourself flying around. So we have lots of protective stuff. And of course, you do have your privacy. There's a little door. So other people know that you're in there. Here's a pretty cool place. This is sort of like in your house where everybody meets in the morning. Uh, after you wash your face, brush your teeth, you want to find something for breakfast. And this is our kitchen. You might notice there's all sorts of foods here. Uh, it's like opening the refrigerator. You got all your different stuff that you want to have. Drinks, meats, eggs, vegetables, cereals, uh, bread, uh, snacks. And that's a good place. That's where you find all the candy. Uh, side dishes and then some little power bars just in case. So we have all this type of food. Some of it is dehydrated and so we have to hydrate it, fill it up with water. Some of it is all ready made and then all we have to do is heat it up. So something like this, I'm pulling out barbecued beef brisket. Pretty yummy. Not only is this food made in the U.S., but we also have food here from Japan. Uh, we've got Russian food. As you can see, all these red containers are filled with food that's from Russia. Um, and then we get some of our specialty stuff, some things that we like, some of our favorite stuff that your family can send up. In fact, I like fluffernutters, and so I got sent up some fluff so I could make my fluffernutter with peanut butter. So you have a lot of food up here, no problems. Now, I want to say where we are. So right now, we're in the Japanese laboratory. It's one laboratory out of many here on the International Space Station. It's actually on the left-hand side. If I was International Space Station and I was flying through space like this, my left hand would be where the Japanese laboratory is. So now again, we're on the right-hand side, all the way on the right of the International Space Station. This is Columbus, the European module. It has science experiments all over. You could see it looks a little bit crowded. And here we do a lot of our medical experiments. Here we are in the U.S. laboratory. Again, this is a laboratory with science experience on all of the walls here, all sorts of stuff that we do. Um, and one of the things we also do is we exercise. We have some exercise equipment on board the space station. Um, we need to do that because we lose bone density and muscle mass while we're up here, and that's a result of not having to fight against gravity. So how we keep ourselves in shape are with a bike, a treadmill, and a weightlifting machine. This is the bike. 
you notice the clip pedals? So all you need to do is actually clip your feet in and then you can start pedaling. You don't need a seat because you don't sit down. Actually, I haven't sat down for six months now, so you don't need any, any type of seat. Just make sure you're, you're held in with your pedals. You probably see that the bike bounces around a little bit. As I move it, it's not steady and held to the wall firmly. And the reason for that is the space station is pretty big. You saw that there's also solar rays on the space station. If we start putting any forces into the space station, it's going to make those solar rays bounce around a little bit. So to prevent that, the machines bounce around a little bit, move around a little bit. And that way, we don't put any forces onto the structure of the spacecraft out to the solar rays. All right, a little farther on. Come on. I'm here with my two buddies uh, in the airlock. Actually, these are two spacesuits uh, that are ready, primed up to go outside, as we call it, to go do a spacewalk in case we have to do anything outside. Some of the things we do outside are just like inside repairs. We have a lot of um, electrical boxes and machinery and solar arrays, in fact, that I talked about earlier, that are outside, and sometimes they don't work quite right. Um, remember, space is really cold and really hot, and it's also the vacuum of space with no pressure, and so some of the equipment doesn't work well all the time. So we might have to go out and do a spacewalk. Right behind me is actually the hatch that you go out into space, and right now we have it filled up with a couple other spacesuits because we've got four of them up here uh, and some of our tools. But right behind here is the hatch in which you actually go right outside into the vacuum of space. The spacesuit is pretty big, as you can see. It's like being a football player. Um, part of the reason it's so big and bulky is because of this backside, this backpack. It's like going on a hike with a backpack, but the backpack and the suit weighs about 300 pounds. Luckily, in space, nothing really weighs anything, so you don't feel that it's so heavy. But we need to have such a big suit because that guy back there is essentially um, the, the heart of the spacecraft. This, I call this actually a spacecraft. It has all the oxygen for you. It has all the carbon dioxide removal system for you. It also has a heating and cooling system to make sure to regulate our body temperatures while we're outside. It also has a computer, so it tells you on a display here if there's anything that's going wrong with the suit, if we're running out of oxygen, if we have too much carbon dioxide, um, or any type of electrical problem. So it's a pretty awesome little spacecraft and uh, actually got to go out, use my spacecraft, little spacecraft a couple times and it worked like a charm. Uh, lucky that it works very nice. You might want to see what the helmet looks like. It's pretty cool too. We don't usually go out like this so you usually can see when the helmet's open. So you can see what it looks like inside. Somebody's little head would be inside of here. So you can see, you can turn your head all the way around while you're inside of there, but the helmet stays still. So that uh, determines your, your, how far you could see. And uh, it's usually pretty sunny out there, so we have to wear our sunglasses. And this is our sunglasses right here, which make you look pretty cool. <laughs> It's like a glass bottom boat. This is the cupola. It stick, sticks down below the uh, space station. Uh, it's one of those places you find yourself hanging out in all the time because all you want to do is look back at our planet. I think some questions I had were about what do you do in your free time? And you can't help but want to just come to the cupola and, and look outside as much as you can. And a lot of folks. I, I play this game with myself about where we're flying over the Earth. I try to come in here and just guess. After being here for a little while, you can sort of figure it out. You can tell different cloud types over different continents. You can tell different soil types over different continents. So let's see. And then, of course, there's a lot of ocean. So usually we're over the ocean at first glance. I will tell you in just a moment where we are. There we go. Oh, right now we are right over Africa. It's a little bit cloudy, as you can tell, but we're right over the continent of Africa. Hey, what's that? 
They think that's a Soyuz spacecraft. That's the spacecraft that's taken us home to planet Earth today. Oh my gosh. We might have to go take a look at that. That's pretty cool. It's a little bit smaller than the rest of uh, the spacecraft, the space station. So you'll see um, if we go there, it will be a little bit more crammed. But we're going, you can look all the way back to the back of the spacecraft, which is where the Russian segment is. And then you could look all the way forward to uh, the front of the spacecraft, where the, uh, where the Japanese laboratory, the European laboratory, and the American laboratory are. And then back to the solar arrays, where we started in the, this morning when we were looking out the Japanese window. So other questions that were here are, um, what would you re recommend as a job, if so, uh, and to what type of person would want to be an astronaut? I think people who would like to explore. Uh, of course, people who like math and science, that's what this is all about. Um, the, we have people in the office who are doctors, teachers, veterinarians, engineers, pilots. So all sorts of people um, become astronauts. And I think if you, could, you see, it's just sort of cool, so I think People who like to do a little adventure and like to do cool stuff probably usually become astronauts. Hey, one thing I didn't show you, or I talked about, but I didn't show you, was the exercise, one of, another piece of exercise device, which is the advanced resistive exercise, and that's what this is right here. This is A-RED, and you could probably see this bar. Let me just do a little bit of maneuvering here. Stand by. You have to set it up just like at any other gym. you how this works. So you can see you can change your attitude just by going from one module to the next, going up from, from the cupola down here. This is what we call the A-RED. And with this, you can lift weights woo, based on vacuum in these cylinders, just like you do at home at a gym. For example, if I wanted to do a squat, I could do it like this. Oops. I should need some weight on this thing. I'm not lifting with anything, so it's sort of it's too easy. <laughs> One of the cool things you could do, you could do things that you can't do at home. For example, single leg squats with just one leg, because the other leg you won't fall over. So all sorts of stuff. You can also do bench press. We have a bench that we could add on here. So you can work on your beach muscles. <laughs> hey, Aki, what are you doing down there? Smashing things. <laughs> this is one of the cool things about space, too. It sort of looks like there's a big old hole here, but you don't even think twice about it. You could just jump over the hole. Or, if you want, you can go jump into the hole. I'm coming down. Right. Come down. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> then you can come right back up again, like Superman. Woo! <laughs> We're lucky we have a really cool big space station that you can fly around in. That's actually called the PMM. You might have saw it out the window. It was a big silver canister. What's really great about that is it's essentially our closet in our pantry or whatever you want to call it. We have extra food down there. We have extra clothes. We actually throw the trash out down there. So it's nice and organized, and we have all of our stuff that we need while we're working in all these other modules all stowed in this location down here. And it's a lot of fun to play in. So we're going into the Russian segment. Be ready. You don't need a passport either. It goes a lot farther back than this. Uh, we'll go take a trip and say hello to the boys down there in just a minute. 
Well, let's do that first, actually, and then we'll go down to the Soyuz at the very end. This is Yevgeny. Hi. <laughs> Doing a little tour. This is the FGB, and what's cool about this module, it is actually the very first piece of the space station that came up in 1998. The space station has been around for about now um, manned for 12 years, but it's been up in space for about 14 years. And this was the very first. It is like the Russians' PMM. It has a lot of storage, as you can see. So here we are in the heart of the space station, really. This is the service module. This is the central post. In case we had any problems, I know one of, a couple of the questions were about what type of things do you have to worry about. And some of the things we have to worry about in space are fire, if we had a fire, if we had a depressurization, like we were hit by a micrometeorite and it made a hole or if we had some type of toxic atmosphere. We use ammonia for our radiator, so there is a possibility that ammonia could come into the vehicle, and then it would be bad for all of us. If we have any of those problems, we come right here, which we call the central post. It is the main heart uh, of the space station. It was also the first computers that came up here that ran the space station. And so behind this wall right here are these main computers. So we gather here as a group of three or six and then figure out how we're going to either fight the fire, patch the hole, or solve the, uh, the toxic spill. And what's cool about this module, of course, it's the central post. It also has uh, great windows right down toward Earth. It has uh, controls to fly in uh, visiting spacecraft if they need uh, some assistance right here. It has Russian computers as well as American computers to help us control anything we need to on the space station. It's a couple of our crewmates back there, Oleg, Oleg Novinsky on the right and Yuri uh, Malenchenko on the left. And there's also a second bathroom here, which is really cool because six of us going to one bathroom is really tough. And so there's one bathroom here and one bathroom on the other side where I showed you. And you can probably see on the wall behind Oleg and Yuri, some of the heroes of the space program. Um, Korolev, Sergei Korolev, who was a chief designer of putting men into space. And of course, on the right-hand side, Yuri Gagarin, the first man to go into space. So just keep reminds of, of our roots. <laughs> Yuri, what are you doing? Что делать? Making coffee. Yeah. Oh. Black. Black coffee. Yeah. Looks good. <laughs> okay. Spasiba. We're going to check out our Soyuz real quick. Make sure it's ready to go. <laughs> All right, back to the Soyuz. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here just for a quick second. You can see on the Russian spacecraft, there's also other modules that stick out, down, and above. Uh, right here is, let's see, I'm trying to be oriented. That's a, a, um, a place where we do spacewalks run for the, Russian, for the Russian side. There's Russian spacesuits in here. And also a visiting vehicle which brought fruits and vegetables and becomes a trash container when we undock. Up on this side is also a future place where they're going to do spacewalks from. And connected to it is Kevin's, Oleg's, and Yevgeny's uh, um, uh, Soyuz spacecraft. And now we'll go see ours. Whoa. Is it here? No problem. It's a probka. It's a little 
tricky getting in here. <laughs> This is the docking probe right here, this big thing. This helps us connect to the spacecraft. This probe actually sticks into this cone, and that's how the spacecraft, this, our Soyuz, becomes connected to the ISS initially. That is then replaced by clamps, which are around here, that will allow the two spacecraft to be stuck together. And then you can remove the, the probe and the cone. <laughs> you okay? All right, so here we are in the Soyuz. This is what we call the Bet-O, the living compartment, Bitovoy Atsek in Russian. Um, it also has a little bathroom. It's not as good as the other bathrooms, so we try not to use it too much. It has drinking water in it if we need something to drink. And then, of course, it's filled up with a lot of cargo uh, for us, um, for us bringing up and also bringing back down. It has a second purpose when it comes back to Earth. It serves as a um, garbage container. During the descent, we'll, we'll get rid of this, con this area right here, and everything that's in it will just burn up as it's coming into the atmosphere, so that way we can get rid of a little bit of trash. But the main area where we were on launch and where we are going to be on descent is down here because we're not part of the trash. So we're in a safe place. So we're in the descent module, SI. It's a little small, but you can get in. Not sure how well you could see in here. Hold on for a second. I'm going to turn it up this way, just so you could see the hatch, and you could see Kevin. <laughs> it's a little bit small, but we'll we'll come in and show you around. You coming in? Probably not. Okay. move a couple things. We were just starting to get ready. We pre were preparing a couple days ago for our ride home. It's a little bit squishy, but everybody asks, how do you sit in the Soyuz? And you sort of sit in your seat like this. The seat is molded to your body, and so you can just sort of squish in here and be pretty relaxed. Everybody has a handmade seat for them. And then, of course, there's a control panel, and that's where we do most of our actions and work right here. There's hand controllers, which you can fly the vehicle with. And there's a s stick right here, primarily used for communications uh, when we're trying to talk to the ground. So three of us fit in here. Like I said, it's a little squishy, but uh, somehow it seems like we all managed to get in here and, and fit pretty well. And it's a pretty safe ride home. You're probably wondering, what's all this junk behind us? Well, it's all of our parachute, first of all, and then it's all of our survival gear, just in case we end up landing in some strange place on the planet and nobody's there to rescue us right away. We have all sorts of survival gear uh, with us, keeping us safe in here. So they've pretty much thought of everything. And uh, we'll be home on the planet within the next 12 hours. Pretty shocking.